CBS Sports Talk with him and James Brown, host of the NFL Today, is here with the story. JB, good morning. Good to be with you guys Amazing again. Story. We and learned with Gail yesterday. never to talk unless talk to, right? <laughs> All right, folks. You know what? It really is a story of Jerome and Michelle Harrison and as much about how love and perseverance can help overcome some of life's most difficult challenges. Jerome Harrison's NFL career began with great promise in 2006. Playing for Cleveland, he broke the team's single game rushing record held by the great Jim Brown. In 2011, he was traded and underwent some routine medical tests. You really go through a basic, basic physical, you know, they hold you, cough, you know, all that good stuff, turn your head, touch your toes, and then, then he looked in my eyes and that's when it went south. Ain't no dude took the little tube, looked through my eyes like, whoa. Then I was like, man, let me see the paper. And they showed me the paper. He circled, he's like, you see that big white thing? I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's not supposed to be there. A benign tumor was discovered on Jerome's brainstem. Doctors told us, you know, it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. We'll get in there, fold it up, pull it right out. It should take about three hours, and then you guys should be able to go home. I was a little nervous, but he was in great spirits. I said, I won't say goodbye, but I'll say I'll see you later. And I said, I'm not going to even kiss you. I'll give you a high five. I'll do all that when, you know, you get out. After about four and a half hours, the doctor came out and told us that. It wasn't going well. You know, I said, tell me he's going to be okay. It was the placement of the tumor, it being right on his brain stem, and it was engulfed in veins. We were told that only time will tell. So I grabbed his hand and held it tight, and I said, Jay, if you can hear me, squeeze my hand. And he said, he did squeeze my hand. So. Okay, he's gonna be okay. The surgery was really bad, but he's he's a trooper. And about 24 hours after the surgery, they found a blood clot in his brain, and he had a stroke. From that point forward, it was just every hour was touch and go. He was declared a quadriplegic. He had paralyzed vocal cords. He was trached and had a feeding tube. And that was. But she didn't say one word. I didn't die. <laughs> and Jerome wasn't about to quit. I vividly remember when I knew that he was back. Oh, Christmas Eve, yes, it was. <laughs> it was my granddaughter's first birthday. Giselle crawled right into the hospital bed, playing with all the cords. Just seeing her smile and excited, I was so happy to be alive to see her turn one. I could see it in his face, and he was ready to go. He was ready to go. Oh, it was on. It was on. I was surrounded by love and happiness, surrounded by it. It healed things probably I didn't know was wrong with, and helped me get back to my feet. <laughs> He would work harder than any other patient, and all the other patients that sort of see this, and they started working a little bit harder. I mean, this guy was great to have around on the rehab unit. It was just hard work, determination, I think love and support. Michelle was with him every step of the way. Plus, she was more than pregnant. It was like any day she was going to deliver their second child. And this February, the Harrisons celebrated the birth of their son. I'm, I'm very thankful to be alive and to have a beautiful family. Oh, man, I'm very, very thankful. Very thankful. It hasn't altered how we feel about each other, how we feel about our family, how we feel about our friends. It actually added a whole new layer of richness. It has been a beautiful struggle. <laughs> That's well put. Uh, JB, I bet the doctors would say that they could not have done it without his attitude and his fight. The same kind of spirit that he displayed on the football field, determination, not giving up, is exactly what he's displayed here in overcoming some very serious challenges. Well, so, I, he, well he said, Charlie, surrounded by love and happiness yeah. will, will take you many, many, many places. To say the least, he's uh, surrounded by some very strong women. Many of us know all about that, so <laughs> yes. that's a very major reason for that as well. <laughs> What's the prognosis? You know what, right now, the aim is just to make him a fully functioning person to live a normal life.
he hasn't given up the idea of playing football again, but they just want him to be normal again. And Michelle and, um, and Jerome are just awesome people. His mom, very strong. And let me give credit to Charlie Bloom, our producer, who tracked down this and chased down this and convinced the family that he would do a very sensitive and loving piece. He and did. indeed, he did that. He definitely did. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's amazing that he's diagnosed, given the diagnosis that he was given, and then we see him walking on the treadmill. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. just goes to show you that doctors don't know everything, that the will to live and the will to change is a very powerful thing. Which is why you heard uh, Dr. Kelly underscore that they he wanted his other patients in rehab to, to see, see Jerome right. so that they could have an inspiration, a role model to follow. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about a little bit of football yesterday. Uh, uh, you want to ask me Dan Marino quarterback questions, though, will you with the <laughs> quick release? Go ahead, Charlie. Did you know he's the best quick release artist? Did I didn't you know, know that Charlie was a quarterback, but no. go ahead, Charlie. Charlie knows. I was not the kind of football player you were, Jimmy. Uh, there is also the question about the Jets. Um, mm -hmm. Many people are asking, what do they do now? And what happened with the Patriots? Well, first of all, the Patriots are a remarkable team, resilient. Uh, they're going to be there at the end of the, uh, the day anyway. They have been for the last 10, 11 years. The Jets, simple turnovers. You can't turn the ball over that many times. Five turnovers that led to four touchdowns. They Self-inflicted wounds, if you will, to use the sports vernacular is what happened to the Jets. And I know there's an awful lot of conversation. Hey, let's bring Tim oh, Tebow in. Yes. They were bringing that on themselves when they brought Tim there. Perhaps the best thing to do is once they're completely out of it, play him so that they can settle some questions. What's the reluctance to put him in? Players themselves see that Mark Sanchez is the better athlete and gives them the best chance to win. With Tebow, you'll have to, in, in layman's terms, you would have to radically change a lot offensively in order to accommodate his style. He's not the best passer. He's not the most accurate passer. So you'd have to change to a more run-oriented offense if he were in there. Has he gotten better as a passer? You know what, that remains to be seen, and that's what has to be. But according to the players in practice, not enough that they would throw their weight and support okay. behind them. It's great to see you. Good to see you guys Very again as well, too. Yes. Okay, Always thank good you so to much. See you. Okay.